206 stacking leads. Another doubt of promise. Welcome to the studio, guys. My brain hurts because I'm already listening this entire day, the first half of this day, to remix contest entries. Over 300 people submitted their remixes of my song Secrets, which is a great honor. And there are a lot, like really the quality is really high. There are a lot of good remixes, but listening basically to the same song, like every three minutes, a new one, and it's like similar, same stems, same vocals. It's tiring a little, so um, maybe like a, a short a little break. That's really one of the best parts about my studio. It's in an harbor industrial kind of area. It can be really, really loud. And there is an added bonus. The next clip should have been like my, my feet in the sand because there is a beach right next to my studio. But no, unfortunately not at the moment. The water is like at least five meters higher than usually. Like normally the water starts right there, like behind the trees. It's all, it's all flooded. So no relaxing at the beach for me. Mm. But there, there are also other nice spots here in the harbor. place right here. It's also extremely nice. Water to one side, my studio to the other side. And at the moment, whenever I, I got a little bit of free time, I'm reading this book by probably, or you could actually call him the best EDM producer by Martin Forwork. He is a ghost producer, co-producer, and he worked a lot with Dimitri Vegas and like Mike. Those two are at spot number one of the DJ Mac Top 100. You could argue who's the best producer, but he's definitely one of the best. And he has this new book tip of the week. This is part two, there was already part one. And it's really nice as a producer, you just open it up somewhere random and you have a tip for example here tip 212 mixing and producing with a low budget then 187 developing a routine 176 what elements do you put in a track what does the track actually need 167 how to end your track like all of these questions are answered in this book and it's like quite nerdy i mean for beginners up to really advanced people and every day you just maybe read one of them and implement it into your working routine and it motivates it helps it really covers everything like um acoustic i don't know if you can actually see this acoustic treatment of a studio by the way his studio is the most insane on the planet Wow, <laughs> that's epic. It looks even way more epic than, than in all of the pictures. And what I love about studios is like, the second you enter, the, the sound, what you can hear, it, it sounds so different yeah. than anything you might be used to. So This is not what we call a live room. No. It's, a, it's more of a dead room, Yes, yeah. I like it because you have really direct sound if you've missed that video me visiting him in his star wars inspired spaceship studio i'll link it down below and at the end of the video it's it's really really amazing and yeah if you're interested i'll link the book down below and we're also giving away a couple of these as a copy digital and hard copy if you're interested we'll give them away every day here on this channel on my newest video within the first four hours of a new video. Just comment down below notification squad and we'll pick a couple of people to, to get one. 206 stacking leads. A nice way to change things up a bit is to differ the pattern being played when you stack certain leads up on each other. When you have your main melody, it can be cool to place the second layer underneath in a double time pattern. That way you create a unique sense of depth and cool accents on your main lead melody. That's a nice tip. What I also like to do is like playing chords, stacking them, and then leaving out certain notes on, on different layers so that on every note, on every chord, it changes slightly. 
this can sound nice, it can also sound very chaotic. 194 is about binaural panning, layering kicks, that's something really important if you want to have a fat kick sound. 172, cool way to spice up your sound. Now, music, music making, that's the most fun. Enough break, enough listening to remix contest entries, I'll continue tomorrow. Now it's back to me making music in the studio. Another successful studio session all done. I'm working on the cover, the cover of Never Leave You. We recorded Julia a couple of weeks ago in the vocal booth and I'm still processing her vocals. And there is maybe one tip I can share today. And that is whenever you have a break and the vocal is in there and the vocal sounds too thin, I really love to layer it with an octave lower just to give it that like fatness and kind of bass part so first the normal vocal if you want me to stay i'll never leave if you want me to stay then the second layer it's just a copy of it with quite a lot of processing if you want me to stay <laughs> Sounds very shitty on its own, the second layer, but in the break where nothing else is really playing, just the vocal, the guitar, I'm, I'm missing a little of the bottom end and, and the voice to fill it out entirely. So it, it works, it helps a little. So the next layer is of course a lot more quiet. I distorted it quite heavily to make it a little more fuzzy with the clip distortion that is built into Logic. I used the vocal transformer to pitch it down by 12 semitones and also pitch down the formant by 12. Then a little bit of character with um, the amp designer. A little bit of EQing, not that important actually. Valvesque, more distortion, so it's, it's heavily distorted. At the end, a sample delay to make it wide and make it kind of a, as a bass double and a little bit of reverb just to fit it nicely into the mix. And then if you listen to both vocals at the same time. If you want me to stay, I'll never leave if you... Gives it a little more of this underground kind of feel. If you just listen to the vocal without it, it's a little too thin. If you want me to stay, I'll never leave if you want me to stay. And if you listen to both voices solo, it's, it's a little awkward because you have this fake bass distorted layer underneath. But I think if you add the, the normal doubles and harmonies, if you want me to stay, I'll never leave. it starts to work. And then if you listen to it with the instrumental, with everything else playing, you can't really hear that bass layer, but it's still there giving fuzziness, character, warmness, and like a little bit more of bass in the break where you just have none or less due to the kick not being there. If you want me to stay, I'll never leave. If you want me to stay, I'll always be if you want me. But again, this song isn't even close to being finished. I still have to work a lot on the vocal. And on the instrumental, it's like maybe just 10% done, but I, I can't wait to finish it and then finally be able to release it. Maybe in like two, three, four months. I don't know, like this song, it's taking quite long. I don't know why. Back at the DIY store with Vanessa. This could actually be like a segment in the vlog. DIY store exploring. What are we doing today? Well. We are looking for lights and for... what is it in English? I don't know. The stuff you need to put your curtains up the wall. Someone will comment it down below. I don't know what it's called in English. But in German it's called... Gardinenstange. So now you learned something. At least like one tiny thing today. An hour later. Even more than an hour later. No way. Yes. Yes. And we didn't buy anything. Nothing. The guy was like, hmm, maybe get Philips Hue. And we were like, yeah, maybe. Now we have to think about making the entire apartment Philips Hue, which is a lot more expensive, but maybe cooler. I don't know. If anyone has any suggestion and if it's worth it, because the colored light, I don't like. Shopping. The good kind of shopping. 
Arrived today, MacBook, 16 inch, my second try. This right here is a beast for music production. We'll talk about it more probably tomorrow. I still need to set it up, which might take a couple of hours the rest of the night. So that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, oh.